Hello, my name is Dr. Catherine Lefebvre. I'm a movement disorder specialist here in Chicago at Northwestern University. And it is my great pleasure today to interview Dr. Tamara Pringsheim on the topic of um, acute onset explosive tick-like behaviors. Uh, Dr. Pringsheim is an associate professor with the Department of Clinical Neurosciences, Psychiatry, Pediatrics, and Community Health Sciences at the University of Calgary. She is the program lead for the Tourette and Pediatric Movement Disorder Program at Alberta Children's Hospital and the Deputy Director of the Matheson Center for Mental Health Research and Education. Thank you so much, Dr. Pringsheim, for agreeing to do this interview. Thank you very much for inviting me. So this topic of um, this uh, seemingly new onset um, tick-like behavior has really sparked a lot of interest over the past months, especially. Many neurologists, especially pediatric neurologists, have noted an increased number of patients presenting with explosive onset of complex ticks over the past year. Can you tell us more about this? Sure. So uh, at our center in Calgary, we started seeing a number of adolescent girls presenting to the emergency room or for urgent assessment uh, with the rapid onset of complex motor and complex vocal tick-like behaviors starting in October of 2020. In approximately 70% of these cases, there was no prior history of ticks. The tick-like behaviors develop rapidly over the course of hours to days, and the level of disability was extremely high, with many of these young people unable to attend school due to the severity of their symptoms, and some even requiring hospital admission. Subsequent discussions with colleagues in the United States, the United Kingdom, Europe, and Australia revealed that they all were seeing similar cases with striking similarities in the phenomenologies of these tick-like behaviors. Since October, the number of cases has continued to grow, and we are also seeing an increasing number of young adult women with similar symptoms. Thank you so much. So it seems that um, some of these behaviors and, and tick-like movements don't seem to quite fit the typical clinical profile of patients with Tourette's syndrome. Could you elaborate a bit more on the differences? So we've distinguished two subtypes of these rapid onset cases. The majority present with the first ever onset of complex motor and vocal tick-like behaviors, and some have a previous history of typical mild, simple motor and vocal tics, and suddenly develop severe, complex tick-like behaviors. The first onset explosive complex tick-like behavior cases are different from our Tourette syndrome population in many aspects. First, the age of onset is significantly older. Children with Tourette syndrome typically have onset of their tics at a mean age of six. In these rapid onset cases, the age of onset is older with new onset between the age of 12 and 25. The sex distribution is also very different. We usually see three to four boys with Tourette syndrome for every girl. In the rapid onset cases, 95% of the cases we've seen so far are in girls or young women. The evolution of tick symptoms is very different in these rapid onset cases compared to children with Tourette syndrome. In Tourette syndrome, children usually start with simple motor tics of the face and often in early childhood have one or two tics at a time that change in character over a period of weeks to months. Complex motor and complex vocal tics develop over a period of years and rarely occur in the absence of simple motor or simple vocal tics. Many people with Tourette syndrome never develop complex vocal tics, and the most common vocal tics we see in practice uh, tend to be sniffing, throat clearing, coughing, or grunting. In the rapid onset cases, the majority of tick-like behaviors we are witnessing uh, are, are complex with large amplitude movements resulting uh, in self-injury or directed toward other people and complex vocalizations consisting of the repetition of random words as well as coprolalia in the majority of cases. 
Many of the same words and phrases are in common between patients. There's also great variability between rapid onset cases with respect to the presence of premonitory sensations, suppressibility, suggestibility, and distractibility, which are core features of tics. Most patients in the rapid onset cases note the suggestibility and the distractibility, but it's about 50-50 with respect to experiencing premonitory sensations and being able to transient, transiently suppress tics. Finally, the comorbidity profile of the rapid onset cases differs with, the, with a relatively larger proportion of these young people having comorbid anxiety and depression in contrast to ADHD or OCD, which are the most frequent comorbidities we see in youth with Tourette syndrome. In some of the uh, children, there is a family history of neurodevelopmental disorders. Many of our patients report psychosocial stressors at the onset of their symptoms, some related to pandemic lockdowns and social isolations, uh, school or exam performance, or concerns related to parental acceptance of their sexuality or gender identity. In the second subtype, where there's a previous history of simple motor and vocal tics, the age and sex distribution is similar to the rapid first onset cases, as is the phenomenology of tick-like behaviors. Thank you so much, that was very helpful. I understand that some have labeled these new onset tick-like behaviors TikTok ticks. Could you elaborate a bit on the role of uh, social media here? Yes. So when we started seeing these cases, we started looking for a common disease model to explain the commonalities we were seeing in phenomenology. So for example, I have seen six people in the past four weeks who are saying the same low frequency word as one of their complex vocal tics. And in the previous 20 years, I have not seen a single patient with this specific word as a tic. So I started looking uh, at YouTube, but it was my teenage daughter who brought to my attention the videos on TikTok assembled under the theme of Tourette syndrome. There are hundreds of videos of tics and tick-like behaviors posted by young people from all over the world, with some accounts having millions of followers and views. Now, during the pandemic, TikTok did report a tripling in, their, in the number of active viewers. We believe that these TikTok videos may be a trigger for functional tick-like behaviors on the basis of a disease modeling mechanism and and also be a trigger for ticks, similar to the echo phenomena that we frequently observe during social gatherings of people with ticks. Pandemic related psychosocial stressors may be acting as a crucial second hit, which triggers the clinical expression of symptoms in susceptible individuals with social and environmental reactions to symptoms inadvertently reinforcing or intensifying them. Thank you, that's very interesting. So for a neurologist in practice, encountering a patient with this sudden onset tick-like movements, what additional investigations do you suggest? So the key to the diagnosis is a careful history of the onset and evolution of the tick symptoms and any associated mental health symptoms. Many of our patients have identified TikTok and other people with ticks as a trigger for them. So it is important to discuss social media use and if there are any friends or family members affected with tick-like behaviors or Tourette syndrome. A careful neurological examination should be performed. We have not been routinely performing neuroimaging in patients with a consistent presentation and a normal neurological exam. Thank you again. That is very helpful and hopefully reassuring for many uh, neurologists seeing these patients. So after the diagnosis is made, what should be the next steps? And specifically, how, how do you approach treatment for these patients? So the level of disability experienced by young people with these rapid onset tick-like behaviors is extremely high. I'd say in most cases, the level, if I were to compare side by side, the level of disability associated with these tick-like behaviors is higher than the level of disability uh, 
of most of my patients who have a diagnosis of Tourette syndrome. As this clinical entity is so new, we have not yet uh, collected data systematically on the treatment approach or outcomes. We have been recommending first-line treatment with the comprehensive behavioral intervention for tics, which consists of habit reversal therapy and a functional intervention to minimize triggers and reinforcing factors. We have also been recommending cognitive behavioral therapy and or medication for comorbid anxiety and depression if present. We spend time discussing functional neurological symptoms and how these tick-like behaviors may be a physical manifestation of the extreme psychosocial stress, anxiety, social isolation, and loneliness affecting millions of people worldwide during COVID. We also discuss echo phenomena in people with tick disorders and how social media exposure may be triggering ticks. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I think that resonates well with my own experience of seeing some of these patients and hopefully raising awareness of this issue will help other neurologists to recognize and manage these patients appropriately. So thank you again so much for um, the interview today and uh, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you.